HIP-70, you guys know I have not been a big fan of helium. In fact, even when it was blowing up and everybody was like, why aren't you reviewing the helium stuff? I was like, because I don't have a helium device. And by the time I got a helium device, it wasn't really worth anything. These kind of things that, that are kind of, I guess, blow up overnight. They get extremely popular. A whole bunch of people buy a whole bunch of hardware for it. It's really hard to get the hardware. And then by the time everybody gets their hardware, it's no longer profitable. That's pretty much what happened with Helium. Now, there were obviously other issues going on with Helium that we talked about in the past. They were very quick to change monetary policies that damaged the actual hardware infrastructure uh, people compared to the holders. This is not dissimilar from what a lot of different networks and blockchains have done in the past too, which is reward the people that do the least amount of work and have the most amount of money and damage the people that do the most amount of work and have the least amount of money, which is pretty much, you know, the way society works in general as it is, it feels like sometimes, and you're kind of fighting a losing battle. That is how helium functions in my humble opinion. But in this HIP, they propose a new approach to proof of coverage and data transfer accounting by moving this responsibly to oracles and thereby reducing the complexity required for operating a blockchain that supports the helium network. Through these actions, we believe we can allow for more reliable data transfer and more consistent and predictable proof of coverage activity. With the move to more Oracle activity on chain, we believe that the simplification allows us to select a more scalable layer one for Helium community, specifically Solana. It is very weird to go from we're going to, you know, we want to have essentially <laughs> a more scalable solution than what we have, which is our own layer one blockchain. We want something more re reliable and we're going to go to Solana, which has gone down over seven times in the period of a year and has proven to not be uh, very reliable. Yes, I suppose we could say Solana is scalable, at least compared to pretty much a lot of the other projects currently out. Sure, we can give them that, but reliable it is definitely not, right? And that's kind of where I go, what is going on here? It does seem like, of course, with something like Helium that is a little bit more centralized in the way it's governed, uh, they would go with a more centralized project like Solana and probably have some weird back dealings that basically is financially beneficial to both of these networks and the people that control them. Ugh. Integration of the Helium tokens, HNT, DC, IoT, and mobile initially into the Solana ecosystem additionally provides Helium wallet holders access to a variety of applications, governance mechanisms, and other utilities not available natively on our sovereign L1. We acknowledge that this change removes the need for staked validators operating block production and challenge creation as they do today. That said, we expect that HNT stakers will migrate their positions towards securing current and or future sub DAOs and participating in governance through the vote escrow token based system proposed in HP 51, which you could check that one out as well too. removal of the staked validator reward also returns the full 6.85% from of HNT emissions back to the miner pool that could be considered something positive for the miners. Of course, here is that there is that additional 6.85% that since they're shutting down the stake, will go back to the miners technically so the people that are running the actual infrastructure that is a positive that comes out of all of this to a certain extent the question is is of course how much does this impact the actual project and the price of HNT if HNT just becomes essentially a token on the Solana blockchain which I believe is pretty much what's happening here right including of course the DC the IOT and the mobile all that stuff becomes basically just tokens on the Solana blockchain so we consider these changes as complementary to the changes proposed in HP or HIP 51 and necessary set of changes to more easily implement some of the redemption and governance mechanisms proposed in 51, 52, and 53. We additionally expect that more protocols will be attracted to participate in the Helium ecosystem because of the move to a more widely used layer one blockchain. 
And obviously that is kind of what they're going for is more people to essentially um, hop into there. What do I see though? I see them messing once again with, uh, with monetary policy. And this really makes it difficult, I think, for, you know, stakeholders, for pe people that participate in the network. If you keep messing with the monetary policy, it's like, you are you uh, i don't know at the end of the day like are you smart enough to be running a blockchain project in the first place i i suppose is how how i set that out you guys know that i've had these issues with other uh networks in the past where it's like you know if you're supposed to be a really good coder and really good at math then why do you fail to set up a proper monetary policy from the get-go right why do you have this problem from the very beginning. Now, this could be a little bit different, of course. It's not just monetary policy. They are changing monetary monetary policy as a result, but in at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is scale it out with a, another uh, project, essentially with Solana. I think that Solana is a weird choice because I don't think it's very reliable. I think changing the monetary policy is going to upset the current stakeholders, potentially. And I'm not sure that any of this is really good uh, for the network. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions, of course, in the live chat, as well as the comment section down below. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.